the Bell TH-57C Ranger, a derivative of the Airframer's 206 family, has been the U.S. Navy's primary training helicopter for more than half a century. But with the average age of those heavily used airframes at around 35 years old, that era will soon come to an end as they are finally retired. In January, Leonardo was announced as the winner of the Navy's Advanced Helicopter Training System program, a year after the service formally announced its request for proposals. The OEM entered the TH-119, a variant of its AW-119 single-engine light helicopter, which is built at the company's Philadelphia facility. The Navy's had a long, really successful history of using single-engine aircraft as an undergraduate trainer, mostly because it's, it's simpler, simpler to teach the students, and it's more cost-effective. And we just felt like we had the right answer in the, in the TH-119, a single-engine solution. Deliveries of what will be officially designated as the TH-73 are scheduled to begin this year, and the initial contract for 32 aircraft with spares, support, and training is valued at $176 million. Subsequent individual year contracts are expected to boost total deliveries to 130 aircraft by 2024, with a total value of more than $648 million. It's exciting times because in the last 14 months, we went from zero aircraft in DOD to on contract for over 215 between the MH-139A for the Air Force and the TH-73A for the U.S. Navy. So we're very excited and we're excited to bring an excellent product to both of those services. Meeting the Navy specifications for the new training helicopter called for special modifications to the stock AW-119. Well, we had to make three significant changes to the standard AW-119 to make it a TH-119. The first is the flight deck. We had to replace the Garmin flight deck with a Genesis Aero IDU-680 system that was already IFR certified, and then we put two sets of displays, so there's dual displays on both sides of the aircraft. We had to include a, an auxiliary generator, which was capable of picking up the full electrical load in case of a primary generator failure without any load shedding. And then obviously the, the configuration of the aircraft itself, the cabin has an optimized seat uh, for a non-flying pilot, a non-flying student that can sit in that seat and see everything that's going on in the cockpit and be a part of that learning process long before they even set foot in the, in the left seat of the aircraft. But that might not be the end of the story as Airbus Helicopters, which had entered its twin-engine H-135 in the contest, issued a formal protest in February contesting the decision. In a statement to AIN, the company said it believes that certain technical aspects of its proposal were not assessed accurately, and added that it is confident that, quote, when these technical misunderstandings have been clarified, the Navy will be reassured that the H-135 is not only the best overall value for taxpayers, but also the most suitable aircraft for the mission. For AIN, I'm Kurt Epstein. Thanks for watching this AIN video. Please like, subscribe, and share it if you've enjoyed it. Also, visit AINonline.com for all the latest on the aviation industry.